And that's assuming that the fantasy world of, hey, I, I just taxed the crap out of my country, took all the available investment capital out of the country, and consumed it in taxes and government spending, but the economy will still maintain the same GDP growth and there'll never be another recession, another virus. The inability to have adult conversations around here of the proposals are lunacy. The great politicking. You go home, stand up in front of the town hall, tell them these things, you're lying to them. And they, everyone applauds, oh, I really want free stuff. And then you take the best estimate, and understand this number is probably double last year, the 2021, than it will be in the future years because this has huge amounts of the COVID fraud. Many of us believe the COVID unemployment may be the single biggest fraud maybe in world history. We've seen some underlying reports, it could be a couple hundred billion dollars, but let's pretend that the fraud and waste of 2021 was something we could capture. We can get every damn dollar. That's $662 billion. That's amazing. Now, it's a one-time thing. You, you, you get it back. We were able to collect every dollar, stop all the waste and fraud. Great. Except we're heading towards $2 trillion deficits at the end of the decade. So we took care of about a quarter of it. Now, we need to work our heinies off to get every dollar of waste and fraud out of the system. We need to stop designing insane systems where we hand out money and we're going to figure out if you should have gotten it a year, two years, three years later. But we got to stop the fantasy that there are simple solutions. Last week I stood here and I showed the board saying, do you know if we got rid of every single dollar of foreign aid, those, so the, what, the $38 billion of foreign aid, it paid for about 11 days of borrowing, not spending, borrowing. I know we've been told over and over, hey, there's simple solutions, tax the rich, get rid of foreign aid, waste and fraud. The rounding errors in the scale of what's hitting us. But there are solutions and damn it, I need us all, whether you be on the left or the right or, or the public that's just trying to understand, be willing to think differently. Be willing to stop this insanity of, well, we'll just do entitlement reform. Yeah, like that's going to ever happen. How many members of Congress are going to come here and vote? I've cut Social Security. I cut Medicare. It's never going to happen, nor should we. Those are promises we have a moral obligation to keep. Now the moral obligation is how do you finance them? How do you keep them? And every member who refuses to tell you the truth about the math is also putting them at peril. And you can't lie. My brothers and sisters on the left, you got to tell the truth. Playing this game, oh, the 2017 tax reform, oh, it crashed revenues. Do you understand we are trillion dollars higher receipts for those of us on Ways and Means Committee than we were when we did the 2017 tax reform? It's a spending problem. If I had come to you in 2017 and saying, hey, four years from now, we're going to be taking in $1 trillion additional revenue, you would have laughed your hiney off. But we did. But how can we still be so upside down? How can in this year, when we're still not doing the crazy level of COVID spending, we're still a quarter trillion dollars, and we're only, what, into our second, third month? of this fiscal year. So I beg of us, it, it, it's, you, you look at charts like this and you understand it really is a spending, it's a structural spending problem. And as I was just showing you, the really uncomfortable slide, over the next 30 years, it's Medicare and Social Security. It is what it is. And you look at the projections, and this slide is incredibly important for all my junior economists out there. We have times over the, since the 1960s till today, 
We've had very high tax marginal tax rates. We've had low marginal tax rates. And guess what? We always seem to come in with high tax rates, low tax rates, good economy, poor economy. We always seem to ultimately come in right about 19 percent of the size of the economy in revenues, in receipts, in taxes. I need you to think about that. So if I want more revenue, I need an economy that grows the size of the nation, the wealth of this nation, the prosperity, the poor get less poor, the working middle class get rewarded for their work. Do policies that grow, and the benefit of that is that's how you get more tax receipts. Because you got to look here, understand that our spending is heading towards 30 percent of the entire size of the economy. I know these are geeky numbers, but those are stunning numbers. And yet the number of times, and I, and I showed you before all the projections, well, we'll just raise taxes. And then you look at our history when we've done that, the growth, the size of the economy have flatlined, or they shrank. And so the total dollars in aren't what you prayed for. 